Hi, welcome to MediClass. Today we shall learn about Dean's Fluorosis Index. So first let us see what are the indices that are used to measure dental fluorosis. So first we have the Dean's Fluorosis Index introduced in the year 1934 and modified in the year 1942. Then we have the Thilstrup Fezesco Index of Fluorosis introduced in the year 1978. Tooth Surface Index of Fluorosis introduced in the year 1986. Fluorosis Risk Index introduced in the year 1990. And then we have the Indian Index, ICMR Index for Dental Fluorosis introduced in the year 2013. And what are the other descriptive indices that may be used for measuring dental fluorosis in a patient? So these are namely developmental defects of enamel. Jackson Al Alauzi Index, Murray Shaw Index. Now let's talk about the Dean's Fluorosis Index. Now this index was introduced by Trendley H. Dean in the year 1934. He devised an index to assess the presence and severity of mottled enamel. The Dean's Fluorosis Index introduced in the year 1934 had seven categories and the classification was as follows. The first category was normal. Then we had questionable fluorosis, followed by very mild fluorosis, mild fluorosis, moderate fluorosis, moderately severe fluorosis, and lastly, severe fluorosis. Now in the year 1942, Dean modified the index and the moderately severe category of scoring was removed from the scoring criteria. The scoring system now ranged from 0 which depicted normal enamel to 4 which depicted severe form of fluorosis. The 1934 index had 7 points or 7 categories whereas the modified Dean index had 6 point ordinal scale. And now this modified index was also recommended by WHO in its basic survey manual. Now let's see what exactly is the representation of the different scores of the modified index to record the dental fluorosis. Score 0, it represents normal enamel. It's the enamel that we usually see in the oral cavity. So the description is as follows. It is the enamel which represents the usual translucent semi-vitriform type of structure. The surface is smooth, glossy and usually of a pale creamy white color. Moving on to questionable fluorosis with the score 0.5. Now the enamel discloses a slight aberration from the translucency of normal enamel ranging from a few white flecks to occasional white spots. This classification is used in those instances where a definite diagnosis of the mildest form of fluorosis is not warranted and classification of normal is also not justified. Moving on to the next scoring criteria that is the very mild fluorosis with the score 1. Your opaque paper white areas scattered irregularly over the tooth are seen but it involves less than 25% of the exposed tooth surface in the oral cavity. It includes teeth showing 1 to 2 mm of white opacity at the tip of the summit of the cusp of bicuspids or second molars as well. Next is mild fluorosis with a score of 2. Here the white opacity of the enamel of the teeth is more extensive but it covers less than 50% of the exposed tooth surface in the oral cavity. Next is moderate fluorosis with a score of 3. Here as you can see in the images the enamel surfaces of the teeth are subject to attrition and they show marked wear. And all surfaces are usually affected and brown stain is one of the most frequent disfiguring feature which is seen in this score. Last is the score 4 which represents severe fluorosis. Now as you can see in the image, all the enamel surfaces are badly affected and hypoplasia is so marked that a general form of the tooth may be affected. There are pitted or worn areas and brown stains are more widespread than seen in the score 3 and the teeth often have a corroded appearance wherein they have lost their natural appearance. Well that was about the scores. Now scoring criteria Dean's index, it usually results in a single score of an individual. What we get at the end is the single score ranging from 0 to 4. So now if fluorosis is present, the individual will be scored based upon the two most affected teeth in the oral cavity. And if the two teeth 
which are the most affected are not equally affected the less affected tooth is scored for that individual like for example if there are two teeth in the oral cavity having score of 4 and other having a score of 3 so in this scenario the score 3 will be considered for the subject or the patient and the person will be termed as having a score 3 in the dean's modified criteria remember the examinations are usually made in good natural light with subject facing the window or the source of light instruments used are only the mouth mirror and probe now what are the advantages of this dean's modified index so now the dean's fluorosis index remember it is very simple to use it is universally accepted it attempts to validate visual appearance against the histological defect that is seen and it is the most sensitive of all fluorosis measuring indices so what are the disadvantages or limitations of this index now one of the major disadvantages is it only records the two index teeth it does not measure the extent of defects on the remaining teeth or what is the scenario in the entire oral cavity again the score gives no idea of location or surface involved it just gives us the criteria that a person is affected by dental fluorosis and what is the overall presentation of a single score again isolated defects are not recorded so we cannot make out which area of the tooth is involved or which tooth is involved specifically distinction which is present among the categories which we saw is unclear and lastly teeth are examined wet so we may overlook minor opacities which will be present so to summarize dean's fluorosis index is still the most widely used index from the time it was introduced to measure dental fluorosis and it also remains the one which is recommended by world health organization in its basic survey manual for recording of dental fluorosis You can find a Google form link in the description section. It has MCQs related to this topic. You can attempt those MCQs and find out how much you learned about the topic. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you liked it and if you do, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for any updates regarding new videos. See you in the next video. Till then stay healthy and have an amazing week.